In this video, we are going to implement the place picker functionality from the Google Places API. So if you don't remember what that is, I'll click on this little icon and basically it just opens up a view so that I can choose locations nearby and I can select one and then go to select location and it will select that location and then I can get information on that location by clicking our little info button. So it's actually quite easy to set up. So we'll open up Android Studio and uh, we only need to add maybe 15 lines of code or something like that. Actually, we'll start by taking a look at the documentation. So here we have the place picker documentation open. It's very close to where we were with the places API when the getting started. We just select place picker over here. And so basically all you need to do is do this right here. So uh, you uh, get a place picker object, do dot intent builder, builder equals new place, place picker dot intent builder, and then start the activity for a result and then capture the result in an on activity result method. That's pretty much all we are going to do. And then we're going to implement our own methods for moving the camera and getting the place from that uh, place picker widget. So I'm just going to actually copy this code right here and go to Android Studio. And actually what we need to do is still add that image view widget because currently we don't have, oh, got an ad. <laughs> we don't have this image view widget in our application. So if we look at the Google, our application, we go to map, we don't have that little map icon. So actually that's what we're going to need to add first. So let's go to our map activity map layout file. And we're going to add one more image view widget down here. So go image view. And do uh, 40 dp by 40 dp and it's going to be very similar to what we have above here so id we'll call it place picker and we'll do margin left 10 dp margin top 15 dp and scale type center crop again just like before and what else do we need? We're gonna do, we're gonna put this one actually below relative layout one. So I'm gonna actually copy that and I'm gonna put that above this image view. And then this one, I'm going to put below there, just like that. So our info button is gonna be below our place picker widget. And did I get, I got an ID, yep. So now let's import a drawable resource for it. So an icon, go image asset, action bar and tab icon, and we'll go I'll just call it IC map. Get the map and change the color to black. Get rid of the padding. Don't really need that. And that looks good. And now we can set the source to that widget. So we'll just click on the widget, go source and do IC map. There we go. So now we got our little widget there. We can close uh, map activity and we can go back into, <laughs> we can close activity map. We can go back into map activity and now we can create that image view widget, which will be up here. So M place picker and then M place picker equals image view, find view by ID, r dot ID dot. Didn't I just name it place picker? I've been having this problem all day. It doesn't, uh, oh no, called it, yeah, place picker. The IDs aren't coming through right away. I have to like rebuild. It happens, it's happened a lot today. Yeah, there we go. So after the rebuild, it's fine. So now we have our widget. We can go into our init method and go to the bottom of the init method and do m place picker set on click listener, new on click listener. And then inside here, we want to, we can go back to our documentation and copy this. And then go back to Android Studio and we'll paste it in, import the libraries we need, and we'll need to do map activity dot this because we're inside of an interface, unhandled exception. So we're starting to try catch. And now let's see here. So this could actually be made into a global, but it doesn't matter. It's fine there. And this is angry because it's, it doesn't have a different log message. So I'll just do Google Play something error. And then I'll copy that line and I'm going to do the exact same thing down here. Copy that, do that. There we go. So that's good. Now that will uh, initiate the intent. Now we're going to uh, go back to the documentation 
and scroll down and we're gonna grab this on activity result right here just gonna copy that and now I'm gonna paste that down below the init method so right here and yeah so we do need to create a global variable so I'm just gonna snip this and go up to the top here where all of our variables are and I'll do private static final integer now we'll scroll down and that's deprecated. I think actually all they did was they switched data and the context with the new method, yeah. So that's fine. Uh, so that's all good. Now inside of here we need to get our, we have our place object. So here's our place object. This is kind of the key. Remember the place is kind of the, the thing that you want to get always because if you have the place you can get pretty much anything. And then we're going to um, do just like we, what we did before with the autocomplete API where we uh, started a pending result and then set a result callback we're gonna do exactly the same thing here so we can do uh, actually instead of typing it out I can just copy it so let's scroll down and so right here we're gonna copy literally exactly the same thing here because if you remember we got the uh, place ID and then submitted it and then got uh, looked for a callback so we're gonna do basically the exact same thing go up to the top paste that in, except to get the place ID, we're just going to go place dot get ID, and that's it. And then that will that will run through our regular flow of things so that nothing is really disrupted. It's going to be identical to what we're already doing. Because like technically you don't really need to do this because you already have the place. The reason we had to do this uh, before was because we only had the place ID and we needed to get the place. But if if, uh, if we do it this way, we're not going to disrupt the regular flow of things. I literally won't have to change any code. Uh, it's going to do one more task than it usually would need to do, but it's, I think it's better than writing more methods. So I'm just going to leave it, leave it like this. And that should be it. So let's, uh, let's run it and see if we get any errors. All right, let's click on map. And we're going to choose our place picker here. And it looks like it's opening the way it's supposed to. Uh, let's just select... A location this is across the street from where I'm living so I clicked on it there we go so use this place I'll hit select it definitely highlights the place let's see if we get any information and there we go we get the phone number the website and the price rating so it looks like everything is working as we expect so that's gonna be it for the course or at least this is all I have planned for the course just want to give you kind of a brief introduction on some of the some of the stuff that they're doing with Google Maps API and the Google Places API they've also made a lot of changes recently like the way they do the place the place object and all that stuff is fairly new um, so I just wanted to make sure that I think it's important to know about Google Maps because pretty much every application these days has some kind of GPS component and uh, so just kind of a little course on it is definitely important I think so thanks for watching make sure to leave comments and let me know what you think and I'll see you in that next video